Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Go Get That Rose. Uh, I am your host, Sarah. We are covering the third episode of Bachelor Presents Listen to Your Heart, which is just a funny title to me, but uh, whatever. Uh, with me, as always, is my co-host, Kristen. Hello. We're halfway done. I don't know if I'm happy or sad <laughs> or relieved. I don't know either. I feel like this was an interesting one because we definitely did get a little more light into what this show is supposed to be and the goal of it. So I feel like I have a little bit more direction watching it now to understand what Chris Harrison wants from us and what Mm -hmm. we're so interested in. Yeah, but I feel like it was two episodes too late, to be honest. You're not wrong. Like, I feel like this should have been the beginning or the last two episodes should have been one episode and not spread over two. Possibly. What were your general thoughts about this third episode? It's definitely a, a change of pace. And sure. Yeah. Um, somewhere in my notes, I put in all caps, uh, we finally find out what this show is about. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because in, in the middle of the episode, well, maybe like 20 minutes in, Chris Harrison's like, okay, here's the deal. Here's going to be happening from now on. And I'm like, this feels way too late. Um, but I don't know. I... I like this episode. I, I think I don't really know. <laughs> we got some of our normal bachelor bachelor stuff, um, but also like a new twist, which I guess I thought this is what the show was going to be right off the bat, uh, but wasn't. So I think it got to the point where I was like, okay, now this is what I expected it to be. Uh, what did you think? Yeah, I'm I'm glad that we got a little bit more focus on the music. When I was watching with my boyfriend last night, we're like, oh, we get it. So it's two weeks of Bachelor in Paradise followed by American Idol. (laughs) Yes. I I feel like if you're going to explain the show to anyone, like that's pretty much what it was. Because it was an incredibly condensed matchup period to get the couple. I don't know what it was IRL as far as their timing, but it felt super fast. And, you know, that structure has its pluses and minuses. You don't really get a whole lot of relationship drama. And we'll get into the the elements that we do have later on. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm glad if, if they're not going to give us that, at least make sure you're focusing on what the show was about originally, which is the music. And so I'm glad that we're getting these performances. I was impressed with a few of them. Not so much Same. with some others. Same. Uh, <laughs> but it was interesting. It's certainly unique. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's the word. Um, yeah. So let's just let's jump into it. It does start out with um the whole love aspect of it. I do you think from here on now it's gonna be it's got to be more about the music, right? Or do you think Chris is still gonna be pushing like he said at one point in the show, love first, music second? It's a great question because I think that that's that's a really tough one. Because if there, if no one else is going to be joining the show and you've asked people to pair off in these pretty, like, concrete singing and love relationships, yeah, I don't feel like there's a whole lot that could possibly change that would mm-hmm. make things interesting for that love portion. The yeah. Julia, Brandon, Savannah stuff aside, which even that is kind of lackluster. Yeah. I feel like we're mostly just going to be looking at performances. And if your goal or maybe those that aren't aware, the goal is to produce music and go on tour. If your goal is to do that, you probably don't want to screw it up by causing drama in the house that could potentially get you booted off. Yeah. Yeah. So what is, I guess, from the Bachelor point of it, if you're looking at it as a Bachelor show, like, if that isn't the aspect of it anymore to have, like, that's why we like the show, right? That it's crazy and outrageous and the people are these weird like characters of themselves and not really realistic but if what you're saying is like they're looking to actually have a career come out of this they can't really act that way so it does kind of it's not really a bachelor show but it's not really a music show either right and i think the hard part which obviously abc had no purview into the situation we're in now (laughs) uh, producing music and going on tour is cute and all but there's no tour for you to go on and yeah. there eventually is. I highly doubt that public interest is going to maintain itself long enough for people to care about yeah. people in six months to a year to want to go see them on tour. 
Yeah, because no one's watching the show right now, so... <laughs> and they have nowhere to go at this point, so I mean... <laughs> but, I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, so, Chris comes in, tells all the couples that... It's the point in Paradise where they tell them they have to get engaged or they have to leave, um, but at this point, like, they don't have to get engaged, they just have to pair up. Uh, but he tells them they all have to pair up with each other, make real connections, and that's kind of where the drama kind of comes in. Um, I guess we can just cover all, do you just want to cover all the Julia and Savannah drama in one go? Definitely, just, let's let's jump in. All right, it. let's just break it down that way. Now, I don't think, we weren't like the biggest fans of Julia. Not a fan. Right, no. okay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I... She was a little shady last week, uh, especially towards the end of the episode, and she is very shady this week. Um, yeah, it kind of started off. Brandon's not too great either. Very, very shady. Um, but Julia, like all the girls and all the guys, are all talking like separately in their little groups and stuff. And Julia brings up that her strong connection with Brandon, and Savannah looks a little blindsided. Um, but then she starts talking about how, like, Brandon pulled her aside and said that she still, he, like, knew she was going to get the rose, and that's why he didn't give it to her, and Savannah's, like, very blindsided, but Julia's kind of presenting it more like it was all Brandon's intentions, and she was just the victim, and she says at some point, like, I was even thinking, what about Savannah and Sheridan, and it's like, okay, girl, (laughs) that was not your intention, that's not what you were thinking, but okay. No, um and she she is a very shady creature because as we as we saw last week her interest in Brandon I felt like really came out of nowhere while well, she seemed to have been thinking they had this spark from day 1 so to a viewer yeah, yeah. it just seemed like she was trying to have her cake and eat it too and have yeah. all these men which Chris Harrison was not going to allow and I I've yet, she, I've yet to see Do you think she's seen after. the show before? Like she's probably a fan of Bachelor. If if she is, I'm she probably did come in trying to be the villain. Yeah. It's it's a messy situation and this was a frustrating episode to watch because of her as she spent the whole time villainizing Savannah for being so fake and artificial whereas she's pretending to like Sheridan this whole episode despite telling us otherwise just so she can continue on with the show and make Brandon jealous and Savannah angry. Yeah, which is hilarious, because she does go in, like, at first it kind of seems like she does really, maybe not care about Savannah, but it was more like, I thought it was going to be, oh, let's gang up on Brandon together, he's doing this to both of us, like, he's clearly the one that's causing issues, and then, like, she completely switched and was like, Savannah's so fake, blah, 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 and I was like, whoa, where did this come from? Like, I did not expect her to, like, completely 180, more like Savannah was really like pulling Brandon along and was making Brandon be in love with her and against Brandon's will, which was not the case at all. It was, it was a violation of girl code 101 as far as I'm concerned. And it it was just ugly to watch. It didn't make Julia look good at all, which as we've talked about, if you are trying to be a public figure after this show, you have to have some element of likability and she just doesn't have it. No, she does. And she's older, I believe. I mean, like, Age doesn't mean anything, but, like, she's older than Savannah, and she, I thought Savannah was carrying herself very well in this episode. Um, she did kind of break down. I think she was just overwhelmed. But as far as, like, when her and Julia had their talk, and Julia was basically just calling her out to her face and stuff like that, I thought she handled herself very well and really showed maturity. I did, too. I definitely think that Savannah is there for the right reasons. And it's playing the game as it should be played with like without necessarily villainizing herself. And she, I think she genuinely has feelings for Brandon. I feel for her. I feel genuinely bad for her. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. And I, go ahead. No, go ahead. I just thought it was funny that she, Julia was like confiding in all her information in Jamie, who, as we said before, like Jamie just comes off very young and childlike to me so I just thought that was kind of funny that she was just like going to her and telling her all this stuff I'm like I don't know she's the best one to get advice from oh yes you're 21 year old that's been in 400 relationships that she's yeah 
got in. <laughs> Seems like a wise sage. Yeah, I was like, I don't know if this is telling, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just reading into it, but I was like, I don't know if she's the right person to be complaining about other people to right now. And I, I feel for Sheridan and this whole mess because he oh, clearly yeah. really, really likes her. Yeah, I felt, I feel bad. Because at one point he says, like, oh, yeah, me and Julia, we're going to make, she chooses to be here with me. And I'm like, that's not what's happening. <laughs> like, that is not what's happening at all. Yeah, that's. And I feel like, I think I said it to my husband last night, or maybe I said it last week. I don't know. I think I remember saying, like, he might be the person that puts up with it for a while, but I don't think he's going to let himself get walked over for, like, the rest of the show. Like, maybe another episode, but I think there's going to be a point where he's like, I'm not dealing with this. Like, this is too much. It's very possible. I mean, (laughs) frankly, I was so put off by their butchering of the Backstreet Boys that if they decided never to perform again, I would be okay with it. Um, there was a couple butchering <laughs> of songs, but uh, let's, we'll let's get it. into some of those. Let's talk about the other performances. Okay. Um, well, I guess the butchering that kind of is relevant is when they're all like practicing and stuff and you just keep hearing Savannah and Brandon singing the cheap tricks onto each other over and over again. I was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like it's fun. That's what my boyfriend said too. Cause we were, we were both impressed by the actual performances at the yes. judge portion of the night. Surprisingly impressed because when you listen to them practicing, it was and even terrible. Some of the earlier singing was not good. It was not good it was at all. So bad. It was, they were like both really pitchy and their voice. So the thing to me is like, they're getting paired up based on who they're attracted with. But that doesn't mean that, like, their voices are going to match. They have the same style. Like, that doesn't mean anything. And then the producers are giving them songs that they have to sing, which no rhyme or reason to these songs. They, You know what I mean? Like, there's no theme. Like, they're each just getting a song, um, which is interesting. And, I mean, you can tell that some of their voice, I think it was, I forget who, there was a, one couple um, that we were like, okay, their voices match really, really well together. Um, but there's a couple other co- couples, and it's Brandon and Savannah, or the main one, that their voices are not similar and do not really blend well together at all. <laughs> yeah, I would say the worst performance for me was probably Becca and Danny's uh ho hey rendition oh. Oh. she was so sharp it was almost painful to listen to and they're they're cute and you know i enjoyed watching their date at, do their little fashion show getting major gay best friend vibes from danny <laughs> not a whole yeah. lot of like sexual yeah. chemistry there no but yeah those are two people like they are just not meant to sing together. Maybe they could be romantic. Maybe they could be best friends, but they have no business performing together. No, and their voices were very, she had a very stage theater belting just presence about her. And his was, I honestly don't even remember his voice, so I don't know. <laughs> I think that says a lot. Um, <laughs> it's also a weird song. My husband's like, oh, I love this song. This is such an easy song to sing. And I'm like, no it's not because it's one of those ones that like kind of trick you into sounding easy but you have to like i don't know you have to have the right style like the way they were singing it too was almost like it was i don't know it felt really it felt the friendship vibes like it just it sounded different it didn't have that like guitar acoustic it did but it didn't i don't know i don't know how to explain it yeah, and I, I think that the judges agreed with us on that. It was just, it was pretty uneven, and there was just, there was nothing happening there, chemistry-wise. I didn't enjoy watching them sing together. It was like two friends at a karaoke bar. Yeah, it was re- really awkward, and especially <laughs> when you just want to kiss her, and she, like, kind of pulled back. Every time that she he tried to kiss her, she always pulled back, which I'm like, that is not... <laughs> it's not great I was like, did, she's not into him at all <laughs> what did you think of the judging format for this part of the show it sounds like this is what we're going to be getting for future weeks a few bachelor alums as well as some actual musicians i like that i like that it wasn't just bachelor people 
um, and that they actually had, I mean, we had Kesha, who I think is still, I believe she's still relevant. I don't know. Um, and I, I, I enjoy her music. Yeah, I like her music, and she's more than just, like, she writes a lot of music, and she's, like, very involved in the industry, like, more than just, like, a casual pop artist, you know what I mean? Like, she's had her struggles and stuff like that, so I think she was a very good choice, um, and, I mean, I know Jason Mraz because of, like, his couple hit songs, so I don't know how really big and popular he is, but I'm sure, I mean, he's a, he's a person people now. I didn't recognize him, though. I was like, who's this? Oh, Jason Mraz. <laughs> I thought he was a great addition because I think, I personally think he's a great musician and someone yeah. I enjoy listening to, but he's also very knowledgeable. He's someone that plays instruments and writes for himself as well as other artists. Mm. So I think his input was really valuable. Yeah, and then we had um, JoJo and Jordan, which I didn't watch her season I did not either, so I don't have a okay. whole lot of perspective on whether or not we like her. <laughs> Find them. Um, I so- did watch Ben's season, who she was on Ben's season, and um, I, I mean, I liked her. She wasn't, I don't know, I was kind of surprised when I was like, oh, this is the girl that became the Bachelorette off of this season, and people love, like, I get it, but she was just kind of there and normal, and I don't know. Um, and I just thought it was ironic that, speaking of Ben, they also had Ben's, uh, ex fiance the one that he chose, Lauren, who was married to the music guy, uh, the oh, music guy. Oh, that's Lauren Bushnell. Yes. Oh. Um, yeah, which I was like, oh, we got both of Ben's, uh, one and two choice <laughs> on this episode. Very interesting. With the guys that they are together and not with him, but, uh, you know. I didn't um, catch that. That's fascinating. Yeah, I don't I don't think she's really a part of Bachelor Nation um so much anymore cuz I like I watched a couple other videos or whatever about it and they were saying that she seemed she was just it was more like to be supportive of her husband and her husband's like music career and stuff like that cuz he's a pretty well-known country artist, I believe. Um He is. I'm a fan. Yeah. Uh yeah, so it was kind of more like, oh yeah, that's that's Lauren, but it wasn't all about her. Which, like, I appreciate. I I don't know. I like that. Um, yeah, but was, I liked her on first season. She's it was cute. Diverse <laughs> roster of judges. Um, and I think for the most part, I I agreed with a lot of their feedback. Yes, I can kind of run down the list. The first the first ones that were up were Rudy and Matt, and they performed a Sean Mendez song. Which, personally, I thought they were super fun to watch. I mean, we already know Rudy's a little bit crazy. I thought they were great. Like, her voice was so good. Yeah, I I have no complaints about that. I thought it was a fantastic performance. I thought they seemed to have a great time together. Yeah. Whether or not there was, like, massive sexual energy, I don't don't know. I mean, they've known each other for two weeks. They could grow. But I'm excited to see them through. I'm excited to watch their performances. Yeah, I I really like them. I feel like they're kind of unpredictable um, as far as, like, their love. I don't know if I care so much about them ending up together and, like, the love aspect of it, but I did like watching them perform. Like, I am interested in that. I don't know if they have the potential for a real love relationship. Yeah, I don't think They certainly <laughs> did not start on strong footing. <laughs> but yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to watching them progress. Yeah. I think, well, I wrote Best Female Voice, um, but she was the first one up, and I think there's a couple other ones that have really strong voices, but she definitely has a really good voice. Oh, definitely. And then the next performance we saw was from Brie and Chris, our uh, early on lovebirds. Yes. Um, that was, what is, was a tough one. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed it, um, but then I was like, at first, like, when Chris... Because I don't think we really heard Chris sing sing. Um, they were kind of, like, sing talking. But I was like, okay, Chris! Like, I hear you with the nice, smooth, kind of jazzy voice. And then the longer I was watching it, I was like, I don't think I'm liking this anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening. I understand that. You're right. I mean, Chris has a phenomenal voice. I think yes. he is probably better suited as a solo artist. 
Yes. Their their genres don't really match up. Yes. And as a result, it felt pretty uneven. And I kind yes. of felt like Brie was attempting to put on a show to force the yeah. chemistry, which made me a little bit uncomfortable to watch. Yeah. I really liked, I think that's what it is. I really liked when he sang and I really liked his parts. And I was like, oh, like, I felt like the song fit his style a bit better. And then with Bree, I like Bree's voice. I just don't think it was the right song for, I, yeah, like you said, I don't think their genres are the same. Yeah, they're, I mean, they both seem lovely. They are non-drama if they love each other as much as they say they do, I'm all for it and I support yeah. it. Do I necessarily want to watch them perform every week? We'll no. see. Like maybe a different song. I will happily watch Chris, yes. but they're ones you know. I don't. I'm not rooting against them. They can continue in this. Let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like her dress though. It was very yeah. like 70s to me with the up and the back, the like kind of swoop back. I I really liked it. And then our next one was Becca and Danny. We kind of touched on with their incredibly Ugh. sharp um, position, which unfortunately Ugh. clearly did not serve them well, as that was our Ugh. first departing couple. Uh, wasn't that surprised, to be honest. I wasn't either. Not at all. If anyone was going to go, it was going to be them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. E- even if... To per- even if the performances from Savannah and Brandon was not great, they're going to keep them on the show for the drama. Yeah, exactly. The easiest couple to let go. They haven't had a whole lot of screen time. Their date was really weird to watch and yeah. didn't feel like a date. They have no all. chemistry. No, none at all. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. hope that they stay friends after this, maybe collaborate on some songwriting and have a good time. But this was just not the show for them. I would like to see them if we ever go to Paradise on Paradise. I mean, I feel like they could be fun. Maybe you know, her. I don't. I don't know much about him. I think some of these musicians to Paradise could make for some really entertaining TV. Yeah, because no one would know who they are. No, <laughs> they'd be like, "What? Which one were you on? Which uh, Bachelor show were you?" Oh, I didn't watch that one. <laughs> Maybe some drunken sing-alongs. That'd be great. Yeah, I want. I want to see that. <laughs> All right. And we, we heard next from Savannah and Brandon, which all I right. found was, it was fine. <laughs> it was it was better than the practices. <laughs> Definitely better than the practices. But it was weird. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't great musically. And I felt similarly that she was trying to put on a show. Yes, I agree. Um, I don't know. It, the, the whole thing just sounded off to me. Like, and this is one of their songs that it's a, I mean, it's pretty upbeat for the, mo- like, the normal sound of it, I believe, is, like, upbeat and stuff like that. Um, and, I mean, I watch the show uh, Zo- Zo- Woo, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, and she did a cover of this song, and it was really slow, um, kind of like what they were trying to do, but it was done way better. Um... I don't know, it just, it was, it just felt really off to me, their harmonies, I think that's what they were trying to do at some points, I was like, I don't know if that's right, like, it doesn't sound good, but it does sound good, I don't know, I'm very confused by this one. Well, yeah, because he's definitely more of an Americana type yes. musician, and I think that she's, she leans a little bit more pop. Well, she even said she was a pop when Natasha came in, and she's like, who else is a pop artist, and she was like, me. Yeah, I just don't think the way that they were trying to perform it, I don't think it fit her at all. It was it was yeah. rough, but yeah. unfortunately, if we are going to be locked into these couples, I think we're going to be hearing from them quite a bit more. Yeah, well, that brings up one of the things that I hope moving forward, now that we kind of know like what the performances are going to look like, I hope they're not all acoustic versions. I want to see, like, some fun, upbeat, full band, like, performances. It's, music is more than just, like, the guitar and just acoustic. Like, I want to see, like, rock and roll and different kind of things. Definitely. Yeah, I think that would spice it up. Because it's, I mean, it's a two-hour show. And if yeah. we're watching performances for an hour of these same, you know. Stop giving me sad, music. slow... <laughs> Acoustic versions. I don't want that. Make the rest of them be backup dancers. Like, yes. put on a show. Yes. 
Give me some electric guitar. Give me some bass. Like, come on. I want that'd be so much some horns or something. That'd be fun. Cause I feel like that's just as hard to perform, like upbeat, running around the stage, not trying to lose your breath. Like, come on. Well, definitely. Yeah. If you're trying to be a musical artist and go on tour, like we need to see that you one can sing, but two have stage presence. And that yeah. like, hasn't really been portrayed. No. Yeah, exactly. And then our, our next performance was actually quite <laughs> liked by the judges of Julia and Sheridan's uh, Backstreet Boys. I was angry. I personally was not a fan. <laughs> not ruined one of the greatest songs <laughs> in musical history. You could tell that she was really trying to play, like, the love in him, being all into him. She was, like, looking at him and jamming out, looking at the crowd, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, honey. I mean, like, grabbing his hand. Dumb. It was a show. Kesha, Kesha saw the love in their eyeballs. <laughs> she reminded us multiple times. So clearly the judges eyeballs. played into it. Yeah. And it was good. His, they have really good voices. Um, I just, yeah, I'm the same. I didn't really like it. The rendition of it. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, their, their performance to an outsider that doesn't know any of the history of the two of them and the other drama with couples, it it was it was a fun performance. It was probably yeah. one of the more fun performances to watch because people were jamming along to it and getting into mm-hmm. it, as opposed to as you were saying, the kind of like doldrum acoustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. The crowd was like going around, and like Jordan and JoJo were like kind of dancing along. Like that that is fun to watch. Um, I just thought. I mean, we'll bring up Julia again when she's like, we have, they said we have a genuine connection. And she's like, and Savannah must be so uncomfortable. Like, whatever. I was like, girl, shut up. (laughs) Or she's like nodding along with the judges when the judges are like uh, trashing Brandon and Savannah. And she's like, "Mm mm-hmm, that's what I've been saying this whole time. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's interesting because I feel like that behavior is something that has really fucked up a lot of female competitors and other seasons of The Bachelor when they're spending too much energy on the girl they don't like and ignoring the actual Bachelor. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously a little bit different of a situation because they're not all competing for the same guy, but I think mm-hmm. she's going to get herself in trouble if she continues to spend so much energy trying to piss off Savannah as opposed yeah. to focusing on the relationship that she's supposed to be cultivating to win the damn show. Yeah, because I, I really think Sheridan's just gonna like have enough of it. Like I, I don't know. I just see him as being kind of that guy's like, okay, I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna support you, and I'll be there to like work it through with you. But I think after a while, like if she's not giving him enough, whatever. Like I just think he's not gonna really put up with it. Um, and and she might even be like, it kind of seems like she's telling him right now. It's more like I'm worried about them or spinning it. You know, spinning it more like he pulled me aside like she's the victim of it all um but hopefully he catches on (laughs) soon enough that that's not really what's happening yeah and then the next kind of weird couple we saw was natasha and ryan who last week natasha made an 11th hour run (laughs) ryan for a rose which apparently worked out for her yes as a couple, to me, make zero sense together. Yes. But that was probably my favorite performance. It was good. Um, my issue <laughs> with it was, and I kept screaming it during the whole time I was watching it, is uh, stop running. I cannot stand it when uh, singers, especially pop singers, pop divas, just do vocal runs over and over and over and over again. It drives me insane um and that's what she kept doing i'm sure like they probably cut out other parts where she wasn't but what we saw like every time she would end a note she would just do like the runs like up and down um which if anyone isn't like musical or whatever that's just when you do like all the the like beyonce like things um which just drives me nuts because i feel like Yes, you can sing, and, like, that's, it is really hard to do, and I know people that can do it really well love to just show off, but I also think there's something in being, especially in a Rihanna song, where I love that song, I love Stay, I think it's great, because it is kind of more subtle, um, I feel like it's one of the songs you can really build, and I feel like 
just being subtle and not really showing, trying to show off too much is really, really powerful. Um, so I, it was just driving me insane. But she sounded great. <laughs> like she has a very, very strong, beautiful voice. And she's she's a pop star, or aspiring. Oh pop yeah. Star, so <laughs> and I understand where that comes from, probably in her training or what she thinks. She's yeah. Doing as a performance, it was just so fun to watch. Oh yeah. Think they have any sexual chemistry, but I really, no. really enjoyed the performance. It was. They definitely had the most like stage presence. Um, aware of like this is a performance we're gonna play to each other but like him starting out on the piano as she walks out from the back like they were the only couple to do something different where they both didn't start out on the stage and that was great like they definitely stood out and I loved it definitely and then our last one was Jamie and Trevor Ugh. what'd you think um it was the performance was really good um I feel like the song fit them very well they have I don't really like his voice, but I thought this song, he sounded really good in this song. Um, And she sounded good, too. I think it was a bit country. I hate to admit, I didn't really know this song. It's a country song, yeah. Okay, that's, I'm like, this is country, right? And my husband's like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, Morris leans a little bit pop, but she's definitely country. Yeah, I I liked it. I didn't like uh, her before or after the performance, but I liked her during the performance. I, I'm aligned with that. I mean, I struggled with her last week as well. You're on a show to be a musician and you're afraid to sing. It doesn't make any sense. During the practice, she like runs out and we get this tracking shot of her running through the house. I'm like, girl, you are wasting valuable time. Like, what are you doing? It just, it doesn't give me a lot of confidence in her. No. Yeah. And And then like beforehand it just keeps cutting to her she's like freaking out i i understand it's nerve-wracking i'm sure like i would be the same exact way i'd be really nervous and like freaking out but she's like on the ground doing squats like freaking out and then afterwards it's it just comes off so immature to me like i can't (laughs) help it like she's just like "Ah, oh my god like rolling on the ground i'm like girl like what do you do i don't like laughing and i'm sure it's all the adrenaline and stuff but it I, it was just too much for me. I was like, too much. Tone it down. Yeah, it's it's not attractive. But it's kind of brings it's me not. to the question. Like, he's 28, 29? He's he, eight yeah, years he's older not, than her. He's much older than her. And I, want, and I wonder, you know, we only really hear about her insecurity when it comes to music. I'm sure that translates to the relationship. And I just wonder mm. how much he's willing to put up with he being Trevor, but at the same time, how much any of these people are willing to put up with a relationship or pretend in their relationship for Mm. this end goal of their music career. I, I think I really need Chris Harrison and the producers to do something in this show that's going to push these relationships along or test them because just watching an hour of performances for the next three weeks, it's entertaining, I guess, but I can do that on YouTube. It's not really yeah. a show. There's no plot yeah. line. There needs to be more or, like, maybe do stuff that's going to, like, challengers or whatever, kind of like other reality shows where it's going to be, okay, the first half of that is them working on, like, their, uh, I don't know, like, their image. Like, they kind of did that with the Becca and Danny, like, personal stylist. Or, like, give them stage or dance practice. Or, like, different things, that, like, tools that they're going to be able to use as performers or moving forward. Or, like, more, instead of just, like, dates, like, more things they could use relationship-wise. Like, you know what I mean? Like, give it, like, tasks or, or classes or different things that they're going to be able to take away and, like, actually use if you want to do it that way or do theme music weeks or different things like don't just give them random songs that could be fun and engaging to watch and it kind of challenges them or a song that's way out of their figure out what their genres are and then give them something that's a little different that they have to do a twist like what singing songs singing songs singing shows do yeah, and you make a good point. The song selections were incredibly schizophrenic this week. Like, <laughs> didn't make any sense. And I think that's a good point. Like, yeah, pick a genre. And then if that's a genre that is really not in someone's repertoire, 
maybe they'll struggle with that. There just, there needs to be conflict. And I don't yes. feel like there's any conflict, whether in yeah. the performance or in the relationship. And that's just not that interesting to watch. Yeah, exactly. Because the only conflict we really got was the performances was really Jamie just being nervous about performing. But like, as it goes on, and the couples are used to performing in front of people, that's not going to be a conflict anymore. So they're going to have to pick something else. Exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm glad it's a six week show because I don't know if I can handle ten or twelve weeks of this. Yeah, because there's there's not a whole lot that I feel like is really hooking people or making them really get into it for the drama, which is why you watch The Bachelor. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what I was saying. Like, it doesn't feel like a Bachelor show, but it doesn't feel like a musical show either. Like, I just feel like maybe they jumped into it without having a clear vision and as they like went along they're like oh yeah that's a good oh yeah we need to do the music don't forget that's important like oh they can go on tour like i just feel like it wasn't thought out well enough before they started shooting or green letter or whatever no i i agree with you and i think you know kind of the real like icing on the cake of it is that we have chris harrison giving out the roses to everyone in a couple <laughs> format at the end of the show now, which I've been wanting to see Chris Harrison do the rose ceremony for forever. I didn't necessarily yes. mean it this way, but <laughs> I'll take it. I was like, is he yeah. going to give the, the rose? Like, is he going to be like, do you guys accept this rose? Which he didn't, which I was kind of disappointed, but then it made sense, like, what they did. But I was very confused at first. Like, what's happening? I, yeah, him, him handing out the roses – like gold stars in a second grade class just really t- <laughs> it takes a lot of the the power out of the contestants. Yeah. And it it doesn't really it doesn't feel like a bachelor show at all because they're not choosing anything. There's no element of choice and yeah. anguish and drama and making those decisions. It's just probably a voting of their celebrity and bachelor alumni hosts and then Chris what? reading the results. If that's what it is, why didn't we see it at the performances? Like, why didn't, like, a normal singing show, you know what I mean? Like, why didn't they elaborate, and then you picked your bottom two, and then they send them home that way? Like, I guess they need to incorporate the roses and stuff, but they could still hand out roses. Yeah, or give some sort of quantitative ranking in the performance to make people yeah. sweat a little bit. Yeah, that way it doesn't, it, it. It doesn't feel like the judges are pointless because it's like, okay, when Chris comes, it says like, oh, the judges deliberated. And it's like, no, you guys probably just decided. We all knew they were going to go home anyway. Like That way we can believe more that they had a little bit more of a say because we get to see them like deliberate and yeah, yeah, or like give them rankings like Dancing with the Stars or like do something. Yeah, it was way too much like everyone gets a participation medal. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, we'll yes. See. Who uh, who do you think is going to be most vulnerable next week? I I was thinking that because um, I feel like Becca and Danny were definitely the vulnerable ones. Like going into it in this episode, I'm like, okay, they're probably going to be the ones to leave, whatever. But I <laughs> I don't. I guess it all depends on this drama. Um with Brandon and Julia and Savannah, but I don't know. I guess I could see, I feel like all the couples are pretty strong for the most part, so I think it just depends on what bothers them during the week and how they go into, like, their performances. Um, But part of me wants to say Brie and Chris, probably. Yeah, I would would possibly say a Brie and a Chris or a Rudy and a Matt. Yep, that was my second... All great, but just don't really add a lot to the show. Yeah, exactly. I think if it's between Brie and Chris and Rudy and Matt, I think Brie and Chris are going to go a bit farther just because they are the couple that's, like, so in love with each other, and I don't think they'll get rid of that this early on. Um, Because I'm sure they're going to want proof that, oh, this show does work. They're not going to get rid of their only solid couple at this point. That's a really good point. Yeah, that would be kind of a waste if yeah. they like week four and no one else is able to really make it last. Yeah, it's like, what's the, that's not proving that the show is working or whatever. Um, and Rudy and Matt have had issues from the beginning. 
Um, and I think I could see them having like a really shaky week for whatever reason and a really shaky performance. And that's why or something like that. I don't know if that's how the show works. I still not really <laughs> still don't really know. I just I need these people to get mad at each other. And I don't know what's going to be the impetus for that, whether it's <laughs> a bad enough performance where maybe someone snaps. You know, you have mm. you have Natasha in this house with trevor like cause some conflict there yeah give me more drama (laughs) give me more music and give me more drama (laughs) even our departures of ruby and gabe in the early part of the episode were so anticlimactic yeah he was so like calm he's like okay bye (laughs) i think that was the first time he'd had i was like oh oh yeah that was really (laughs) feel bad for savannah because i know we've probably all been there we're like we're not in the mood especially she's like crying on the couch and then he comes over and he's like hey what's going on <laughs> like and poor girl very, very strange and all these apparently deep conversations that they've had are news to me do you think that's that's probably just his point of view like i feel like he's like we have such a strong connection and she seems like the type of person to be like very like what's the word just probably very nice and like willing to like talk to people even if she isn't like super interested in them um but that probably comes off very like oh man she likes me and it's like no i was just being really like polite (laughs) like yeah very strange so do you have a do you have a song or a genre that you would like to see i want I, i want some like rock and roll like i want you mentioned that was your like favorite genre. Is there a specific song that you would just die if they performed? I would like I think it would be fun, like what's the first one that pops ahead is um um oh my god. Like Little Little Piece of My Heart, is that what's called? By Janice Joplin. Like I think that would be really fun. Like something upbeat or maybe some um Alanis Morissette or like I don't know. Like I feel like some of these girls could like kill that or even more modern okay we have some pop singers like give me some pink or like i don't know i feel like that could be really fun i would just want something fun and upbeat and fire going off the stage and like i feel it I yeah I, I would like that yeah because i think you make a good point like they need to be performances as opposed to just sing-alongs yes yeah exactly um or i'd go let me see some jason Mraz songs or some more john mayer i don't know or or Chris, Chris has a nice, like, oh, kind of bluesy, maybe a little gospel kind of sound in there. That would be fun. I don't know. That would be great. I want yeah. the voice. This is what I want. I want the voice. <laughs> and it should it should be something that's going to challenge them. Yes. I mean, if you're okay. if you're really asking us to hold our interest in these people for potentially up to a year to see them in tour, like, oh yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, exactly. What about you? What What are you thinking? I like I like your point about like the blues. I think that would be a great yeah. performance to watch. Yeah, he's definitely more of like a soul singer, and I I think I would really enjoy that. I don't want any more butchering of my '90s, 2000s boy band pop. Let's just no, let that go. no more. And I, I think the problem is I don't think I want to hear a lot of them sing together anymore. <laughs> like i want to hear them by themselves like i wish we heard more of like maybe just 30 seconds or 20 20 seconds of them all just singing a little snippet at the beginning so we got to really know their voices yeah no that's definitely valid because yeah that was that was probably the first time we'd ever heard danny sing probably Becca yep. mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. natasha mm-hmm. Um, and for week three that's kind of ridiculous yeah yeah, and Chris. We never really heard Chris. I mean, we heard Chris sing a little bit, but not like, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, definitely. So any other, yeah. like, final thoughts on this episode or what you're looking forward to? Besides um, Chris Harrison giving us a performance? Yeah, come on. that's what this is all leading to, right? It's really just going to be Chris at the end. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That would be, I'd love that. Um, I... I think I enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm excited that we're finally getting more information about the, what this show is, which is sad. Uh, episode three out of six, but you know what? That's okay. Um, and I, I'm actually looking forward to more performances next week. 
I'm hoping that there's some kind of um, structure to the song choices. Probably not, but I'm excited to see what the couples are going to be singing next week. What about you? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I'm i not that interested in the interrelational drama yeah. at this point, so I'm going to go into it with a glass of wine ready to see a great show. Yeah, hopefully. And I'm excited to see who our judges are uh, next week, because I actually really like that aspect. I didn't think I would like the judges, but I actually really did end up liking them. Definitely, yeah. And I mean, I like I like the live performance. I love Chris Lane. I adore that song. So that yeah. was a fun treat. Yeah, that I really like. And I like that they came out and they were like kind of singing. Like, I, yeah, I thought that was one of the nicer like performances, uh, performance dates that we've seen. Maybe next week we'll get Jed. Oh my God. He's got, he has to, he has to. Week three and no Jed sighted. Um, <laughs> when will Jed come on this show? I will, I will bet, I will bet some money that we will see him by the end of the season. Or if we get a season two, he'll he'll be the judge on season two. He's gonna host. Uh, there we go. <laughs> he replaces Chris Harrison. That'd be, I don't I don't know. That'd be an interesting. <laughs> um. Well, that's gonna be the end of this episode for that. We're looking forward to next week. Um. I'm a little sad that we're halfway, actually. Um. But you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens next week. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Kristen. Where can the people follow you? You can find me. It's Kristen Rose. That's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-R-O-S-E-A-A-A-Y. And you can follow me on Twitter at S-C-B-O-C-K, S-S-E-A, B-O-C-K. You can find the show and many other shows on the Merc with a Movie blog feed on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Play, all those different podcast places. Um, there's so many more that I don't even know, but they're all on there. And uh, we'll be back next week to recap even more of Bachelor Listen to Your Heart. Um, and we'll see you then. Bye! Bye!